Giving a talk in a school or being on a podcast or engaging with passing visitors on a stand at an open day. It's all time that you're not in the lab doing actual science or at your desk doing proper work. So if your reaction to the prospect of doing some public engagement is, why? Why should I bother talking about my science? Why should I go through the pain of finding time to do outreach, let alone write and prepare it? Those are totally fair questions, and answering them has got to be the first thing you do. This video is part of a YouTube course on how to talk about science with the public. It's written with a focus on practicing scientists, but to also be helpful for anyone interested in doing science communication. I've pulled out nine reasons why you might engage people with your science. Your job is to work out which of these motivations are most important for your situation. The first three come from the impact you could have on the people you're engaging, and these are often the biggest reasons to bother. The middle three are motivated by why your institution or your funder may want you to do it. And the final three are the potential benefits for you, something definitely worth considering. Stand up for science. This is a key why for me personally. We live at a time when alternative facts are a thing, and some people can apparently do without experts. So simply by being a science communicator, in any sense of the word, you are fighting back against the dangerous tide of misinformation. The world is facing some huge problems, from food and water insecurity to increasing antibiotic resistance. And I believe that science and technology offer the best solutions, but we must first regain trust in today's experts and evidence. The first part of this will come from scientists talking with the public about their work, from being role models, from people experiencing STEM in a positive way through talks or exhibitions or YouTube videos. It's one of my motivations for making this course. The second is the next why. Let's talk. We need to help the public feel confident to engage with the science that could affect their lives, to invite and empower them to join in conversations about gene editing, vaccinations, artificial intelligence early in the process to help them feel confident that they can understand and contribute to the biggest issues facing us all. We need to listen and incorporate their thoughts and encourage them to feel that they can grasp the evidence and then make their own evidence-based decisions. It's about helping people to recognise that science is for them, that their opinions and questions are valid and useful, that the decisions are theirs to make, and most of all that science is done by people like them. Share the beauty of the world. Just explaining why leaves change colour from spring to summer to autumn, or how the ocean is a giant conveyor belt that helps regulate our temperature, can change the way that someone may look up at a tree or out at the sea. With science communication, you get to share with anyone and everyone some of the most ridiculous, beautiful, insane things about the universe. You could make someone's day, help them understand something they couldn't before, or maybe even change their life. Onto the second set of potential whys for you to consider. Uh, if you're not a practicing scientist, they likely won't apply to you, but hang around for the final set as they will. Where did my dosh go? If you've got funding to do public engagement or your institution requires you to do outreach, then naturally you're going to do it. But you might also need to present back on what SciComm you've done to whoever gave you the money. Perhaps it was a private funder. Or perhaps more likely, your funding came ultimately from the government and therefore the public. Do you feel you have a duty to let the public know how you're spending their money? Do you resonate with their why? If your institution does request you do outreach, it's worth asking why they want you to do it. And do you share any of those motivations? For some institutions, it's about civic responsibility. For others, it's about helping to widen participation. Or it might be about reaching potential industry partners or collaborators. If you resonate with any of those whys, that could amplify your support or impact. Rep the ref. 
If you're at a university in the UK and you do a media interview or a public talk or any engagement that directly links to one of your research papers and you can show direct demonstrable impact that it benefits wider society, then that can contribute to the uni's ranking in the REF, the Research Excellence Framework. That not only helps your university's income and credibility, it can also help yours too. Finally then, you. If you're going to take time out of normal work, leave the lab or the field, engaging the public must mean something personally. Okay, yeah, the reasons that I've already mentioned count for something, but what's in it for you? Pop your bubble. Now, of course, you leave the lab to go home or to the pub where you hang out with people who don't work on your science. But do you ever sit down and really talk with them about your research? Spending time doing science communication is a great way to step outside of your research bubble, to hear what strangers think of your work, your science, and science in general. These conversations might even lead you to seeing your own science in a different light. Psych on with benefits. If you can take your research, turn it into a good story, and then sell it, in a manner of speaking, to the public, then you can totally do the same to others. It could offer a way to finally explain to your friends and families what the heck you do all day. Or it's a clear pitch to discuss with fellow scientists or funders. Doing good science communication work could improve your profile, land you that next job, or secure you that much needed grant. It can also be fun. The idea of giving a talk about your science to a group of kids or adults or going on TV for a live interview can sure sound scary, but it can also be rewarding. I really enjoy the challenge and the satisfaction of crafting careful explanations and then using those to make a successful video or to stand in front of an audience and watch as they hang on your words, entertained, shocked, inspired by your science story. Plus, you might enjoy the break from the lab, or a different creative outlet, the extra money, or book sales, or just getting to hang out with others who run similar projects. There you go then, loads of potential answers to the question. My challenge to you is to write down your own set of whys. You could do that on a random scrap of paper or Google Doc or whatever, or you could download my free course resource for this video. It's slightly more structured and guided than a blank sheet, and you can grab the whole free pack of resources that run alongside this course. Let me know any thoughts or questions about this video in the comments below. And as I said, this course is an introduction to science communication for scientists. So if you've got any ideas for what to focus on for future videos, put that down there as well. And subscribe to my channel so you know when they land. See you next time.